Well, good morning, Lake Country Baptist Church. Good morning. I feel like I have to introduce myself again. I'm John Terry. Nice to meet you all. I feel like I've been gone forever, but I'll tell you what, I, I totally felt the love and, and support and the prayers from you guys. And uh, my wife wrote a little thank you card here. I want to read to you all. She sealed it real good this morning, so I can't get in. Says, Dear church family, words cannot express how thankful we are. The outpouring of love shown to our sweet baby with boy was truly heartfelt. We are surely grateful and blessed to have such a wonderful church family in our lives. Amen. From the bottom of our hearts, we thank you with all our love, the Terry's. So thank y'all so much, and uh, definitely the, the money tree that we got, uh, that money will be put to good use. I'm trying to get him a uh, lifetime hunting and fishing license. <laughs> <laughs> so it definitely will be put to good use. Right? There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, it's the uh, first of the month. I'm trying not to forget anything this morning, so, so I'm a little rusty, but uh, it's the first of the month. So if you have a birthday in the month of February, you just stand this morning. According to my mom, it's the 31st of January. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You gotta stand in play. I can't. <laughs> she won't do it. Happy birthday. I know I forgot to do it. got to lead us in the word of prayer, so I'll get y'all to bow your heads and I'll lead us. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful day and all that you've given us, dear, dear Lord. And just thank you so much for the little things that we take oh so for granted, dear Lord. I pray that you just prepare our hearts to hear from you today, dear Lord. And I pray if there's anyone struggling or is backslidden from you, dear Lord, I pray that you just draw them closer and and um, just renew their spirit, dear Lord. And um, pray you speak to us, fill our hearts with your word. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As I was picking these songs this week, I, uh, I had Brother J.W. Crow on my mind, and, and Tuffy, too. They were both on my mind this week. So got in touch with uh, their family and tried to find out their uh, their favorite hymns. Of course, I got in touch with one with Johnny, and, and, and J.W., he, he didn't just have one favorite hymn. He had three of them. So uh, I, I picked, at least got two of them down, so, uh, and uh, Tuffy, I got him down there too. So get y'all to uh, grab your hymnal and stand as we turn to page 334. This is one of J.W., so first and foremost, as we, as we sing, we're going to glorify our Lord and Savior, but... Uh, and uh, also be in memory of, of these great men of God. I just had a little time to get to know Tuffy, and you can tell he definitely carries the fruits of the Spirit. So, so y'all, y'all definitely uh, keep these, these uh, awesome men in, in your mind as you sing. Okay. Let us, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. <laughs> Oh 
by your name, dear Lord. Thank you so much for our salvation that we have in you, dear Lord. I pray that we just tell that story to each and every lost soul out there, dear Lord. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, once again, good morning, Lake Country Baptist Church. Good morning. Good to see all y'all this morning, visitors. So glad to have y'all. We've got a few this morning. And glad to have you. We welcome you back any opportunity you have to come. Also, we invite you to our Sunday school class. If you have an opportunity to get here by 9.45 every Sunday morning, and we'll have a class for you. Before I get to the announcements, i got to stand up here and make an acknowledgement that I've got a little girl in trouble. I was picking at her, and her daddy got on to her. I'm sorry, Iris. It was all my fault. I asked her about her birthday. I said, how many years did it take for you to get as mean and ardent as you did? <laughs> and she was commenced to explain that she wasn't mean and ardent. That's when her daddy got on her. I'm sorry. Martin, it was me. Also, would like to thank y'all. I lost my dad. Uh, the cards, letters, phone calls, texts, whatever, and the prayers, mostly. I thank you for that from the bottom of my heart and, and my family. We appreciate it. And uh, we're going to miss him. But praise the Lord right now, brother. He is shouting in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he is ripping and roping heaven. And I guarantee you, they ain't seen nothing like him before. <laughs> yes, sir, brother AD. I want to bring up some, something this morning at the men's uh, breakfast. It was brought up of how God touches our lives and how we need to understand the power of prayer. And some weeks ago, I asked this church to pray for a lady. None of you know. None of you have ever seen, and that doesn't mean one hell of a difference to God. You pray for them. That's it. And I asked these people to pray for a lady named Peggy. I didn't know her last name. In fact, I couldn't even spell it. But I said, Lord knows who Peggy is and knows who I'm talking about. And I want to tell you at this point in time, when I told you about that, this woman had cancer all over her body. And I asked the church to pray for it, and I told her that this church was going to pray for it. I got her name put on the prayer list, and I've been in touch with her friend, that it's her mother. And yesterday, she woke me up at around, I uh, didn't wake me up, but sent me a message at 7 o'clock in the morning and, <coughs> and said my mother just came to the doctor and every one of those cancers is shrinking. Amen. Amen. And I said, well, just praise God for it. She said, we already have. This is that lady that I'm telling you that the doctor comes in and prays with her. <coughs> <laughs> and and that that's amazing to me. I have absolutely hats off to this doctor. <coughs> but I thank God that we can understand we need medicine, we need these doctors, but we need the healing power of God right. in our lives. And I'll thank God right now that He is touching this woman and moving in her life. Uh, I don't know if it'll ever be completely gone or what whatever God will is, that's that's the way it is. But I know he's given her time to find him. He's given her time to know his love and understand his patience with us, as we all are. But I want to thank the church for praying for her, and I'd like to get her back on the prayer list. And hopefully I can just walk in here and say, never mind, she's completely free of this, and we don't need to pray for her anymore. <laughs> but uh, thank you for that. Amen. Amen. Okay. That's good. That's what that prayer is all about. Don't have a couple announcements. Building and Grounds Committee meeting today at 4 o'clock. You're on the Building and Grounds Committee. Just remember that, 4 o'clock. Also, next Sunday, be in prayer. We're going to have our communion for our Lord and Savior. Lord's Supper. So y'all be in prayer about that. Any other announcements? I have one. Uh, there's a security seminar. Uh, it's uh, held. It's going to be held at the Atlanta Church of God uh, <coughs> next Saturday at 10 a.m. and what it is for is church security. So if you uh, want to attend this meeting next Saturday at 10 o'clock at uh, Brother Miller's uh, church out on the Long Ridge Road, well, it'll, be, it'll be at 10 o'clock next, uh, next Saturday and it's gonna be address the issue of church security and 
and uh, explain to people who are involved in church security as to what they should do and what they should not do and the things to look out for. So if anyone is interested in that, even if, <clears throat> even if you're not involved in church security and you're just concerned about it, be a, a good seminar to, to attend. So if you get an opportunity to do that, well, uh, it's, uh, it's out on the Long Bridge Road to the left, Long Bridge Road, 1841 Highway, south uh, of Atlanta. So uh, if you get a chance and want to go, well, you'll be welcome there. Gary, do you know who's putting it on? Probably do, but I don't have it written down. <laughs> I know it's a security company. Oh, okay. It's, a, it's a, uh, an authorized security company that they've asked to come and help with this. Because they're actually, uh, uh, <coughs> actually companies who are going to churches and telling people because they realize the danger of just having somebody jump up and start shooting in the church. Exactly. And, and they, you need to be able to look out for these things. So, yeah, it's a, it's a company that's putting on what else? Uh, James? Uh, this is the first Sunday Deacon for me to do, but maybe I don't want to be up to Gary uh, if the uh, building ground don't take too long. Maybe we'll meet after it or something up for church or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right. Prayer request? Um, several months ago, I asked prayer for a little boy. Um, his first name completely skipped my mom, but his last name is Johnson. Um, I got Friday, sat down with his mom and got an update on him. This little boy that needed to have a heart transplant. Um, his, he's been having to undergo blood transfusions twice a week to keep this little boy alive. Arkansas Medicaid is refusing to pay for his surgery. Um, so the mom's having to battle Arkansas Medicaid. And um, they're going to New York. New York's going to be the one to do, and Bo oh no, Boston, excuse me, not New York. It's going to be the ones to do the transplant if we can get it, if they can get it approved. Um, but they have a donor. Everything is in line. Let's just pray for Arkansas Medicaid to, to step up and help save this little boy's life. Um, Friday or Tuesday when he went for his tr blood transfusion this past week, his plate works were at four. And that's the only thing keeping this baby alive. He needs this heart transplant. The mom is completely devastated. She's at her wit's end. Um, but she's trying to find anybody and everybody willing to contact the Arkansas Medicaid to, to help advocate for her and her family. Um, so if there's any advocates here that help do those things, definitely reach out to them. But definitely, I think we would definitely pray that this baby gets his prayers answered. Uh, Tommy Hines' family, he passed away at 4 o'clock Saturday morning. <clears throat> y'all, uh, Brandy's not going to say anything about it, but uh, y'all keep her in your prayers. She's uh, accepting a new job with her company, and she's going to move to the Marshall store, and I'll be driving back and forth to Marshall every day. So Amen. Y'all keep her in your prayers, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My brother, uh, Richard Barnhart, his trailer, his uh, uh, camper, was home to him, and it burned yesterday, completely gutted it. Burned his glasses that was laid by his Bible, but didn't didn't hurt his Bible. Not one. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's the Lord for it. The whole the, the whole thing was gutted. It was completely gutted. Mm -hmm. um, I want to thank everybody for all the prayers for me. I want to thank the good Lord that He's got me back. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 I'd like to put our son on prayer list. His name's Wesley Mayfield um, and his wife, Tandra. Wesley was out riding four-wheelers with his friend last night and overturned his four-wheeler, and he's kind of banged up, but he's okay. Mm -hmm. But he needs a little bit of prayer this morning. Yes, I pray that the Lord want to help me with my short memory line. It doesn't get any shorter. My wife has to keep an eye on me. I don't wander off somewhere. <laughs> That's not funny, but I mean, 
Knowing Don and me, I mean, we've always kind of kept us in one another. Praise the Lord. It takes two brains to keep up with both of us. Billy from Nevada. Billy? And I would like to thank all of y'all for the prayers. God is so good, and and He has led me with doctors that also, I, I believe, are Christians. I know several of them are. And in fact, I was told that the one that operated on me is, but I didn't see him long enough. To Amen. <laughs> talk to him. He's in and out, and there you go. But uh, God's so good, and thank y'all so much for being a praying church. Thank you. Thank you. You know, God, it, okay, go ahead. I have a serious unspoken prayer, please. <coughs> I would love to watch how God works. Yeah, I lost, lost a dad. Our family did. <coughs> Praise the Lord, he's in heaven. But just to show you how it works, when he takes one away, I don't got two additions. Right? But one hadn't got here yet, but I got a little nephew a little over a week ago, and I got another nephew doing a couple of weeks. So it kind of carries on. Yeah. It takes one, it gives us two. Anybody else? Kim, would you lift these people up in prayer, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we want to just thank you for everything you're doing in our lives, Lord, because you're the only one that can do whatever we need done, and you know we know that your will is going to be done. And Lord, just take these people and that are on the prayer list, Lord, and lay your healing hand down on them, Lord, because everybody knows that you're the greatest physician that there ever was, and you're going to always be the greatest physician that there ever was. And we ask of you to take these people and heal them and make them whole again, Lord, and make them what you would have them to be, Lord. We just want to thank you for everything you're doing in our lives, Lord, because you're the only one that matters anymore, Lord. We, we, uh, the, all these, the Super Bowl, it don't matter. Amen, brother. It's, it's, it, it, it's just something <coughs> that a lot of people put ahead of you, Lord, but that's not what we need, Lord. We need you in our lives, not the Super Bowl. We want to thank you for everything, Lord. Amen. Amen, brother. Come on. Amen. You're right. That Super Bowl didn't matter. That college championship did. They <laughs> <laughs> never played on Monday. Right? That's right. They played on Monday. Respect. All right. We'll get y'all to turn to page 521. We're going to sing all four verses of On Jordan's Stormy Bay.
program for our offertory song. So we turn to page 407. We're going to sing Because He Lives, as ushers come on the last verse. <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you. 
and this would be on the heart. Well, I was like Moses. Fourth chapter of Exodus. He's arguing with God. Amen. You see, I'm not eloquent. I'm slow of speech. Well, so am I. <laughs> I know I sound like a hick. Come from northwest Louisiana, not far from Ravana. <laughs> Brother Gary, I have heard my, my recorded voice and I do sound like a hick. <laughs> I realize that. But that's not an excuse. Yeah. The Lord's been laying on my heart to do this in front of this church. And after this week, when I saw the funeral of three godly men, I felt like this is the time I need to present. This is titled, That's My King. Do you know him? Pray for me as I try to present this. Amen, brother. Bless you. The Bible says my king is a seven-way king. He's the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. Amen. He's the king of kings, and he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. Well, I just wondered, do y'all know him? David said, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. No far seeing telescope can bring into visibility the coastline of his shoreless supply. No barrier can hinder him from pouring out his blessings. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely secure. He's eternally steadfast. He's impurely powerful. And he's impartially merciful. Do you know it? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's Son. He's a sinner Savior. He's a centerpiece of civilization. He stands in the solitude of Himself. He's awesome. He's unique. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He's the loftiest idea in literature. Amen, brother. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's a supreme problem in higher criticism. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the cardinal necessity of spiritual religion. He's the miracle of the age. He's the superlative of everything good that you choose to call him. And he's the only one qualified to be an all sufficient Savior. I wonder, do you know him today? He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and he sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the aged. He rewards the diligent, and He beautifies the meek. I wonder, do you know Him? Well, my King is the King. Amen. He's the King of knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. 
He's the pathway to peace. He's the roadway to righteousness. The highway to holiness. And He's the gateway to glory. Do you really know Him? Well, His office is manifold. His promise is secure. His light is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And His yoke is easy. And His burden is light. I wish I could describe Him to you. But He's just <clears throat> indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. And He's irresistible. Well, you can't get Him out of your mind. You can't get Him off your hands. You can't outlive Him. And you can't live without Him. Amen. The Pharisees, they couldn't stand Him. For what? They found out they couldn't stop Him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in Him. The witnesses couldn't get their testimony straight. They couldn't get them to agree. Herod couldn't kill him. <clears throat> Death couldn't handle him. And the grave couldn't hold him. Amen. Amen. Yes, that's my king. Yeah. <laughs> Father, yours is the glory and the power and the glory. Forever and ever and ever and ever. How long is that? When you get through with all of the forevers, then amen. Amen. That's my king. sit down one day when, when after you get through praying and talking to him and just start writing down who he is to you just write it down and keep writing and keep writing it. I tell you what before long you're going to figure out he's a way more to you than you ever thought he was amen amen, amen. he's a great God <sighs> praise the Lord I want to talk to you this morning uh, from Acts chapter 4 verses 23 through 31 the title of this message is called Why the Church? Why the Church? Now, I was uh, seeking the Lord. Uh, Y'all know I tried to do my studying and, and uh, writing of the, uh, uh, the sermon uh, Thursday and give myself plenty of chance to, to get prepared before Sunday. And Thursday morning, I, I went and tried and tried and tried and couldn't get nothing and came up here to see Brittany. Brittany wasn't feeling very well that day and I stayed up here with her just a little while and I got in my truck and was headed back to the house and I'd already asked the Lord, Lord, you're going to have to help me. you got to give me this message because I don't have it yet. And, uh, you know, you kind of ask the Lord, what you waiting on? And, and uh, it, it just amazes me how he, uh, how he does those things and how he speaks to our hearts. And as I pulled out on the highway, a scripture came to my mind. And it was this. Why did the heathen rage? Mm -hmm. And I'm driving down the highway and I'm thinking, Lord, what? 
What? What? Why do the heathen rage? Why do the heathen rage? And I knew where it was at because I just got through studying it. I've been studying in Psalms. It was in the Psalms, so I went home and looked at it. Looked at it. it was Psalm chapter two, verse one, and I read Psalm chapter two, verse one, and I thought, Lord, uh, I'm not getting anything from this. What? What else? And I happened to look over to, to in my reference side of my Bible for that that particular verse, and it took me to Acts chapter four, and there it was. <laughs> It was. Plain as a nose on my face. You may not get it, but I did. Amen? Amen. So it's my job now to deliver this message to you. Acts chapter 4, verses 23 through 31. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ for of a truth against the holy child Jesus whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness that they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the Holy Child Jesus. And when they had prayed and, and the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the Word of God with boldness. <laughs> Father, thank You for Your Word. <clears throat> Speak to us, Lord, and only You can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I know this is a, train, a strange title. Why the church? There's a lot of people questioning the church. There's a lot of people who, for some strange reason, feel like there's no need for the church. There's no need to attend the church. There, there, there's no reason why they can't serve God away from the church. And, and, and don't get me wrong, we do serve God away from the church. But don't you think for one minute that there is not a great need for the church. And in this story, and I'm just telling you the end of this story. And Peter and John had gone into the temple and they went there. You know why? They went there to pray because it was the ninth hour of the day and it was their habit to pray at that time. I hope all of us have a habit uh, of praying at certain times and I hope you always uh, meet that obligation between you and God that you do that because it's a, it's a very blessed time when you have that time set aside. And then on their way into the building, they encountered a man. He was sitting there. He couldn't walk. The Bible said that he was born from his mother's womb without the ability to stand on his feet and to walk. And they, every day that they would bring him and set him at this door, and he would beg for alms. It was the only way he had to make a living. And on this day, as Peter and John walked uh, toward him, the Bible says that, that he fasted his eyes on them and asked them for some money. Amen? Because he had to have a way to make a living. He couldn't work. And Peter looked at this man and he came up to him and, and he just knew he was fixing to get some money from them. And Peter made that famous statement, silver and gold have I none, but what I have, I have, I will give you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. And they took him by the hand and this man sprung up. The Bible says that life came to those withered limbs. His ankles returned strength. His feet straightened up. His toes straightened up. And he sprang up into the air. And the Bible said that he followed them into the temple, leaping and praising God. Amen. Amen. And so when they entered into the temple and they heard all of this commotion, the Bible said that all these people, and y'all, there weren't a few people there. There's thousands of people here. 
and they became uh, uh, anxious and wanted to know what was going on and they had all knew this man they all saw this man every day when they would come into the temple this is where he sat in bed he was a resident he was 40 years old amen and they knew that a notable miracle had been done and so when they asked what was going on, instead of, instead of Peter and John sitting there saying, ah, oh, we laid hands on him and more, he jumped up and sprang, and I tell you what, you ought to see what else we can do. They didn't do that. You know what they did? They began to proclaim their Lord and their Savior, Jesus Christ. They didn't want people to think they had any power. They wanted people to know that without Jesus Christ, there was no power. Without Jesus Christ, there was no healing. But they didn't stop there because, see, these same people that they were in the presence of had been the ones that had screamed, crucify him. And so they began to preach about Jesus Christ. They began to, to proclaim Jesus Christ. They began to tell people who they knew he was and who these people needed to know he was. And they, but before it was over with, they, the Bible says that they said that, that you have killed Christ, that he came before you and you are the very ones that crucified him. And he has risen from the dead and people began to hear that. And the Bible says that they began to hear. They began to listen. And, and in uh, verse 4, chapter 4, it said that that day when they heard the word of the God, they believed. And the number of men that believed was 5,000 people got saved that day. Amen. Wow. Amen. Well, some people say because a man got, got his leg back. I got a different version of that. Because they heard the name of Jesus proclaimed. <laughs> glorified, magnified, lifted up, that's what drew them amen. to salvation. It wasn't a miracle, amen? amen? The miracle was just what drew their attention to the men that had the message, amen? And so we, we, we see this going on. Well, it wasn't long until this caused such a commotion that here come the scribes and the Pharisees and these religious zealots that had helped to kill Christ and they wanted to know what happened. Well, you know what? It's hard to deny when the Lord does a miracle. That's right. It's hard to deny when you see 5,000 men proclaiming the name of Jesus. And they didn't really know what to do. And they went to mumbling amongst themselves because they knew what their role with Christ was. They knew what they believed about Jesus. And they didn't like what was going on. But they knew that they better be very cautious in the way that they address these men because of what God had done in this place that day. Amen. Amen. Let, let me tell you this. I want to just, just introduce this. You know what is holding at bay the evil from just taking over this country right now? Do you know why the politicians hadn't come in and taken away all of your rights started taxing your churches, started taxing your tithes, started taxing your giving. You know why? It's because they're afraid to. You know why they're afraid to? Because we represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are here to proclaim, to magnify, to glorify, to exalt, to extol Him and let everybody know who we believe in and what He can do. So they're afraid of that. Why? Because there's a church. Amen. There's a church and there's millions in this church. Praise God for that. So they're cautious. They're cautious as to what goes on. And so they brought James and, and, and I mean Peter and John into a private chamber so they could get on them real good. And Peter proclaimed to them that there's not salvation in anybody else. He, that's when he made that famous station, uh, statement, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And when these, these, these self-proclaimed prophets and, and, and preachers, if you will, saw the boldness of Peter and John, they took note, these men have been with Christ. Amen. They're unlearned and they're ignorant. But man, they got some boldness. You know what? You don't have to be a theologian. You ain't got to have a degree. All you got to have is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. A deep, personal relationship with Jesus. And know without a doubt in your own heart who He is. Amen. And 
he knew that. Amen. He'll give you some boldness. He'll help you proclaim him. He'll be right there with you while you're doing it. Amen. And so when they got these two men together, they thinking amongst themselves, what are we going to do? Because there ain't no doubt in our mind, this man got healed. He's standing right there beside him. Amen. They can't deny what had happened. They can't deny that there was 5,000 men out there that had already been saved. So now they're in a dilemma because when evil meets truth, it always has a dilemma. Amen. 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 We got that backwards, don't we? we? We're always worried about when truth encounters evil. Let me tell you a secret. Truth will win every time. Amen. Christ will win every time. Holiness will win all the time. Godliness will never lose. Amen. Love will never forsake you. Jesus will never forget you. He will never leave you. He will win. Amen. That's right. All the time, every time. Don't be afraid to stand in boldness. Now these men knew who had killed their Savior. They were standing in their presence. They knew what these men could do. But with boldness, they still proclaimed the name of Jesus. So these men got together. What are we going to do? And so they got, they got their heads together and they said, we, got, we can't let this spread anymore. This, this happened in five minutes. 5,000 men got saved. This happened in a short period of time at the ninth hour when we were supposed to have been praying. Look what happened. Isn't that hypocritical? Huh? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, we come to church and we think we got to go this, this little routine. And, and there ain't nothing wrong with, with order in the church and routine in the church. But the Lord Christ runs this place. Amen. 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 His Spirit is all around us right now. He's here. Right. Amen. Right. And we better not do anything to <clears throat> upset what the Spirit wants to do. That's not our work. Our work is to obey the Spirit of God. To not quench the Spirit of God. To relate to the Spirit of God. To listen to the Spirit of God. And to do what he tells us to do. Amen. 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 And that's what these men were doing. And so they said, we, don't, we can't let this spread anymore. Let us straight, straightly threaten them that they speak, speak henceforth to no man in this name. And so they called them together and, they, and, they, and, and, and commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. Peter made another remark to them. You mean I'm supposed to obey you rather than God? Amen, brother. Amen? Let me ask you a question. If our government lawmakers made it illegal for us to meet, would you quit coming to church? Let me tell you this. A lot of folks have done quit, and there ain't no law against it. Yeah. Woo! I'm fixing to preach now, y'all. I'm going to tell you what. There ain't nothing that upsets me. I know there's reasons why people can't be in church. I'm the God knows that. But I don't want to go ain't one of them. That's right. Amen. That I played too much yesterday and I need to lay down today. That ain't a reason to God. Preach it, brother. Because the Super Bowl's on tonight. That ain't no excuse not to be in the house of God tonight. Who's more important to you? The Super Bowl or Jesus Christ who died for you? Amen. Let me preach to you today. There's too many people. You know what? I like to go home and take a nap on Sunday too. Amen. 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 But when it's time to go back to Sunday night service, I'm going to get up and I'm going to wash my face and I'm going to come to church. I'm not going to keep laying there and say, I need to sleep a little longer. Come on with Woo! Are we in church or what? Amen. Come on now. We need to get bold about Jesus. And before you can get bold about Jesus, you got to get serious about Jesus and His church. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. You say, well, how did the church get involved in all this? I bet they show you. When they told them that they couldn't preach no more in the name of Jesus, not to teach no more in the name of Jesus, Peter realized how bold he had got with them. They got a little nervous. Amen. 
So when they had called further and threatened them, they threatened them some more, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people that had been saved that day. Amen. Amen. You don't keep the government off your back. Get out there and make some converts in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. 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 And amen, Brother Jim. Amen. Make some converts. Because the people, for all men, glorified God for that which was done. Amen. We need to give this nation and this community and this county and this town a reason to glorify God. Amen. 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 And so what did they do? When they got nervous, they got afraid, they figured out, they realized why. Because so many men had got saved, because this man had, got, this man had gotten healed. And look at verse 23. And they let them go. Where did they go when they let them go? Look at what the Bible says. They went to their own company. Did you hear that? They went to their own company. They went to church, if you will. They went to where people of like-mindedness and like spirit were gathered together, and here they came. They were upset. They were bothered. They were worried because of the threats that had been made against them. They knew they couldn't quit preaching in the name of Jesus. They knew they couldn't quit teaching in the name of Jesus. But these men would were threatening them with their own lives if they didn't. So they went to the congregation of believers. We said this many a time, not very long I preached this, that the first time the word church is mentioned in the Bible is when Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church. Amen. Amen. And I got to researching this, and this word, what I found out, is all through the Bible. Jesus said it this way for a particular reason. Because we're the church today. We understand that. But in the Old Testament, they were the congregation. They were the, uh, the assembly. They were, they were the company, if you will. They were where people met. The congregation, the company, the gathering, this, y'all, is the house that Jesus built. Amen. And let me tell you this, what I'm telling you. This building ain't it. That's right. Amen. You know, when this building becomes the church, when you're in it, when you gather together inside of it, when you come as a congregation, as an assembly, as a company, when you come together in the name of Jesus, this place becomes the church because you're here. Amen. Amen. Any other time it's just a building. Same way with your body. You know when you're a twine, you're a temple of God? Because God dwells in the temple. That's right. Amen. And if you don't have God, you're not a temple. You're just a walking hole. Amen. Amen. He's the only one. There's things about the church that, 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 that we have to understand. God is the only one that can add people to it. That's it. I, I get so tickled. I, I've actually heard of churches. <coughs> listen to me. We need to start a campaign to increase the membership of the church. I've literally heard men say, we need to go find some doctors and lawyers and, and invite them to church and get them to join the church so we'll have more money. I've heard that. It was in a teasing way, but it was said. Amen? Now let me tell you what, how people come to the church, you know how? The Lord God Himself draws you to Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord God Himself, and according to the book of Acts, adds to His church daily as He sees fit. Right. He Amen. takes you to the congregation of the assembly. There's many of them, but they're all His church. Right. And He places you at His discretion into the assembly that you need to be in. That's His work. He brings you here, and if you feel that led to be a part of this assembly, that's God telling you.
in you. That's it, man. That's God drawing you. Don't dismiss that. Listen to God. Amen. Amen. And so, and y'all, not only is he the only one that can add to it, he gives us some rules about it. And one of the rules I'm going to quote to you right now because we have so many people that just want to come when they want to. What if I did that? <laughs> Shame on that preacher. He knows he's supposed to be here. Really? Shame on you. Don't you know you're supposed to be here too? I know I got to move on. I'm getting way behind. But here's what the writer of Hebrews tells us. He says, Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. You know what he's telling you? Go to church. Amen. 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 And not only that, he adds something to this. He says, even more so as you see the day coming. Mm -hmm. Y'all, we live in dark times. Amen. That's right. The church is the place where the righteous run into. The church is the place where we come together to praise Him, to glorify Him, to magnify Him. I got to move on. And so this is where they went. They went to where they could get some peace, where they could get some strength, where they could get some encouragement. Y'all listen to me. The church is a place where you hear preaching. It's a, it's a place of worship. It's a place of testimony. It's a place of teaching. It's a place of preaching. A place where we are encouraged. A place we draw strength. A place of confession. And a place of forgiveness. Praise God in a place of salvation. Amen. That's His church. And not only that, it's a place of prayer. That's it. Amen. It's the place that Jesus built Amen. for us. Amen. I want to be there, don't you? Amen. I want to be a part of that, don't you? I want to do that. I want to. Let me go. I got to hurry up. And when look in verses 24 through through 30, they prayed this prayer. They began to pray. When they told these people what was going on, the first <coughs> reaction was not fear. The first reaction was prayer. Amen? Amen? They got on their knees and they started, when they heard this, they, what, lifted up their voice to God. How? With one accord. Y'all know what? With the, no, I'm thinking to preach some more. <laughs> the Lord has not called you into this church to gripe, complain, murmur, and fuss with people. He's called you into the church to be in one mind and one accord with a fellow believer so you can touch Jesus Christ and get things done. Amen. Amen. Hey, I'm guilty too. Amen. I'm lying too, and the Lord never, He always convicts me of it. Always. And so they say, they came together with one voice unto God with one accord and said, Lord, Thou art God which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of Thy servant David has said, listen to this, why did the heathen rage? And the people imagine vain things. Could you imagine that when David said that in Psalm chapter 2, verse 1, when he wrote that down, do you think that he was knew he was writing about the future king, the future king of glory, the one that was going to be the, on the permanent throne that God had established for David? Did you think that he knew that? I don't think he did. I think David was prophesying. And this is what the people of the New Testament realized they had witnessed part of the fulfillment of this prophecy. And they say, well, Brother Gary, why do you say part of the fulfillment? Listen to what they said. Who by the mouth of the servant David has said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The, king of, the kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. It started when he was born. Remember what Herod did? When he found out that they had been reported that the Savior had been born. Remember what he did? He called the wise men and he called his people together and said, where was he going to be born? He's going to be born in Bethlehem. You know, remember what he ordered? He ordered them to go into Bethlehem later on and kill every child. That was, I believe, three years or two years old and younger. 
they slaughtered babies trying to kill the king. Why do the heathen rage? Sometimes the heathen are people of your own nation. They're fellow citizens of their own, your own country. Amen? Herod was what? He was the king of the Jews. Jesus was the savior of the Jews. And yet he raged against the Christ and against the, the child. For of a truth against the holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. Everybody was gathered together against Jesus Christ and they crucified him. For to do whatsoever, now this is critical, verse 28, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. There wasn't one thing happened to Jesus Christ that wasn't foreordained by our Father. Listen to me. There's not going to be one thing. You listen to me and you listen hard. There's not going to be one thing happened to the church that Jesus built that's not ordained by the Father already. Amen. 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 I stand on that promise all the time Jesus made when he said, I'm going to build this church and the gates of hell won't prevail against it. Y'all, they may win down here, but woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. it ain't going to keep. Right. Amen. They may win right here in this little church, but it ain't going to keep because they can't. They can't prevail. They can't win. They have already lost. Y'all, we have already won. Because God has predetermined that. And so when they prayed this prayer, and they said these things, and they asked the Lord, they said, Lord, grant unto thy servants that with all boldness we may speak the word. God help the church of today Amen. to quit being afraid to proclaim the word of God in the name of Jesus. God help us to not be those people who are weak and quiet when it comes to Christ. They prayed, Lord, give us boldness by stretching forth your hand. You know what? They asked to be able to heal. They asked for signs. They asked for wonders that may be done by the name of Jesus. God, we got so many people today that's taking credit because they feel like God has made them so special. You know what? Ain't none of us so special. Right. You know what makes any of us special? Jesus does. Amen. Amen. Who does he make special? Those that stand up for him. Amen. You don't think when they, Peter and John walked into that building that God didn't know that man was there? You don't think for one minute that God didn't make that encounter happen? You think for one minute that Peter and John wasn't broke for a reason? <laughs> now this man needed healing. Why? To draw attention to Christ. Amen. Amen? Not to brag about it. To draw attention to Jesus at the these two apostles on peril. Y'all, they had their lives on the line when they began to proclaim Jesus Christ in that temple. Amen. It didn't stop them, did it? And what did God reward them with? The same, you know what my reward is as a pastor? To see people come to know Jesus Christ. Amen. And they got 5,000 men that day. Woo! They were so happy. But Satan didn't like that, so he threatened them. He tried to take away the joy of the believer. So what do they do? Brother Troy, they go to church. Right. And they pray. One mind. One accord. To one God. All together united. How much power would this church have if we all came together? One mind. One accord. One prayer to one Savior, Jesus Christ, and quit looking for our own cats on the back and right. start right. winning right. souls for Jesus Christ. Right. 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 Lord to God, you know what? We have another building project for us over with. Right. Right. just move out under the trees. Right. Right. Amen. Glory to God. And I want to, I got to know, I got to close. I got to close. Verse 31, I'm going to close with it. 
when they had prayed this prayer, now listen to me. It wasn't just that they had prayed this prayer. It was the manner in which they had prayed this prayer. All of them together, united in purpose and power for the glory of God to not have threats slow them down to give them boldness and authority to go out and no matter what's going on around them, proclaim Jesus Christ and Him crucified, the one who died on the cross, the one who rose from the grave because they had seen this. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I want to interject this. Did it pay off? Yes, it did. Later on, there's going to be a deacon that was probably in this in this uh, company. And he's going to get himself in an awful place. He's going to get himself surrounded by unbelievers, Jesus haters. And what's he going to do? He's going to preach one of the most beautiful, high-powered sermons that you ever heard in all the Bible. And they're going to kill him for it. Amen. But at the end of that death, he looked up into the heavens, the Bible says, and beheld Christ standing in glory. Amen. 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 He wasn't scared no more. Let the rocks fly. I'm not worried about that anymore. I have, I have stood up for Jesus, and now he's standing up for me. Y'all, we're on the road right now, and all of us on the same road. Well, I hope we are. Called a straight and narrow way. We're on our way to a place called heaven. Amen. Y'all, we need to act like it. Because a lot of us, I'm afraid, are not on the straight and narrow. They just say they are. They're on that other road that leads to destruction because they live their life that way. Amen? Amen. And so let me close. And when they had prayed, Look at what happened. The place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. You mean they got saved again now? The Bible said earlier when they were at the temple, they did it all in there because Peter being full of the Holy Ghost. No, that ain't what it says. The Holy Ghost came and filled them again and they began to speak the Word of God with boldness. Amen. You know, want to know why you can't do that? Because you need a refreshing. You need a refilling. You need to pray. Call on the name of the Lord and say, Lord, grant me the boldness that I can proclaim Your name to a lost world. Amen. And when you pray that prayer, don't be afraid to bring it to the church. Don't be afraid to ask the church to pray with you. We will. And we'll do it. God, we need to learn why we need the church. We need to understand why the church. This is His church. And this is where we come together for strength against evil. Would you stand, please? Maybe you're here today and you don't even know Jesus. You know what His church is? It's a place of salvation. Maybe you're here today and you've got unrepented sin in your life. This is a place of confession before God and a place of prayer and forgiveness. Maybe you're here today and God's been dealing with you about joining the church or or you feel like, man, I feel so at home here. Maybe today He's telling you to come. Listen to me. Agree with me. And just do it. I don't know what He's telling you today. I don't know what your need is. But you know and He knows. And whatever He's telling you to do, would you please do it? If He's convicting you of sin in your life, please acknowledge that sin before Him. Call on His name. Don't be afraid. You know,
know what conviction is? It's a sign that God sees you, He loves you, and He cares. That's what conviction is. It's not to make you feel horrible. It's to let you know He sees you. If I was a Christian and had sinned in my life without conviction, I'd be scared to death. But I wouldn't be a Christian, would I? So, embrace that conviction. Come to the altar and embrace Jesus. And through His Spirit, He will help the ground shake around you and grant you forgiveness and boldness to live for Him. What's He telling you today? These altars are still open. Why the church? Maybe the next time you hear somebody ask that question, you can tell them. something about your relationship with Christ today and who we are to in Him. And I hope you've learned something about the church and why you're a part of it. Amen. 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 God knows every reason. He knows every heart. He knows every thought. He knows those things. So He knows why. Sister Berlin, it's good to have you today. Amen. You and Brother Don. And I know she's hobbling a little bit, but she said she guess she got a smiley face from her doctor last week. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Y'all don't forget Brother Randy. He's off today uh, doing the, the uh, Gideon thing. And uh, they started their new thank you, Carrie, for you being here. Usually she goes off with him. But uh, uh, they started their first of the year stuff. And so he's going to be missing quite a bit, going to a lot of churches. And I done told him, don't let him burn you out now. <coughs> Amen. And so uh, y'all be in prayer for, for Randy. We should have done that yeah. prayer for him, I guess. Uh, but uh, thank God for our Gideons and and, uh, and our deacons. Don't forget our meeting, uh, Building Grounds Committee meeting today at 4 o'clock. We're going to discuss the floor back here. So y'all be here and all the members and give you two cents worth. And, and we're going to listen to you and then do what we want to. I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. God bless you all. Service starts tonight at 5 o'clock. And so you'll have plenty of time to come to church and Super Bowls after that. And so uh, I'm not going to watch it anyway. But anyway, if that's what you're thinking, holding you back, don't let that do it. God bless you all. And we did not change the time of Sunday night service to accommodate the Super Bowl. Amen. A lot of churches are going to be dismissed tonight for the Super Bowl. Amen. That's the sad part. God help us. God help us. God help us. God warned us about it, brother. Why the church? Put it above everything. Why the church? Let's have a word of prayer and uh, and y'all hug one another's neck before we get out of here. Amen. Brother Martin, would you dismiss us, please? Lord, thank you for being in your house, Lord, and, and uh, thank you that uh, this place is here for us to congregate, Lord, to come back to you tonight. Keep our uh, eyes on you and our hearts in uh, your will and desire, Lord. Bring us all back to the safe in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you.